chat. I guess your compute parent now, the parent of compute, is your child. Yeah, I uh, I adopted it. It's uh, huh? I've completely overhauled it. Um, this update like has has kind of changed the entire architecture of of, of compute and, and CLI um, in a way that like actually now makes it a lot more modular and like extensible. So like the whole point was, uh, well, yeah, when I first adopted it, uh, I started like trying to set it up and there was like this huge UX problem of like new users that don't need to know a lot about cloud and Docker and uh, they just need to be data scientists and need to be good at, at right. crunching uh, the financial numbers. And so the the setup UX was like terrible from that perspective. It was like people were coming with errors that <laughs> with these massive stack traces that my bad, dude. Like, yeah, well, they were like my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's totally it. normal. It's totally yeah. normal. Um, Cause like I see, a, I see a stack trace and like, that's, you know, that's the matrix to me. Like I'm, okay. yeah, I'm in it. like I know exactly what the problem is. Um, but data scientists don't need to know that. So like that was, that's one of the massive updates that we did is like just improving the overall UX of trying to hide away like the issues that might pop up and trying to handle them gracefully um, and kind of giving more solid directions and instructions to data scientists. So if something goes wrong, they know exactly how to how to gather information and report it. Um, cool. I mean, I, I was in the alpha test and I like it a lot. Uh, I think you incorporated some of my suggestions, which I'm sure we'll, we'll preview. Just based on, uh, you know, having helped a lot of people get started with Numeri, I'm kind of familiar with like some of the workflow issues. Um, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is why so many nodes? Like, why do we need it all distributed like that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the So we are coming at it with a, this this mentality of reliability. Um, like the main the main thing, and like I, I kind of want this this next quarter uh, to kind of be like the dawn of the age of reliability in a way. Like I want this to like uh, start to be kind of like in the ethos of Numerai of, of like trying to be as reliable as we possibly can within within our own uh, you know galaxy because because mm -hmm. we are reliant on a few services that like sometimes we can't control but all the things that we can control we want to make as reliable as possible and like the nodes that our data scientists set up need to be that reliable. Um, yes it's problematic when you release 15 models to a compute node and one of them fails in this pipeline. And then now you have to manually run 14 yeah. models, right? I think that was uh, something I accidentally did. So little backstory on that. I was really upset because I changed my compute and one of my top models broke. And so I only uploaded three models and I didn't know until I checked like Tuesday and I had missed submissions on like 13, 12 or 13 models because I, I did it. I broke it. It wasn't anybody's fault but my own. But I wasn't notified. I had no idea that it broke. And it just it showed exactly what you said, that reliability where you can make one small change. And it was, it was like one line. I, I did something out of order and it blew up my whole thing. And so I was like complaining in Rocket Chat as I sometimes do. And so then the emails came about. And so, I you know, I guess... You know what? I'm just going to do it. This is all my fault. <laughs> I broke compute and caused you a lot of work. But you know what? That's a sorry, not sorry, because I think this is going to end up being a great thing for the community. Yeah, I, do, I don't mind doing the work at all, because um, like I, I want to do all the work up front for our data scientists so that they don't really have to be a reliability engineer. Like yeah. I like arbitrage. I don't want you to have to worry about like changing one line and breaking your entire pipeline. <laughs> Like that's not something you should need to. Uh, that's the story of my life, though. <laughs> so, like this new multi-node architecture, it now you can deploy each model separately. Right. So, if one of them fails, now like the rest of them are now running completely separately right. from each other, and like there there is no fail. Um, yep. Cascading failure. So, if I had this compute 
architecture, when I made that change, that single model would have failed to upload. But all the other ones would have worked independently because I didn't change them. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's probably the biggest change. But also, uh, now you can add your signals models. Before, you would have to bury it into one single predict.py. Yeah, and that, yeah. whew, it's a lot of headspace. Yeah, so, so we've added uh, we've added signals webhooks, and uh, I actually added a a new a new job on our backend to to sig uh, trigger these signals webhooks, so that now your signals models can also be individually triggered when our signals tournament is ready. Um, awesome. That also adds to like the reliability part. It also like I think personally it it uses resources more efficiently because now instead of just like sizing the node for right. your biggest model, you can now size each node independently. So like if you have a really small linear regression model, like that only needs a few gigs of memory. But if you have this massive XG boost model, you're going to want that to run independently. Yep. Yep. Especially if you have a lot of uh, feature engineering that grows the matrix. Or if you yeah. haven't taken the time to, you know, minimize your memory usage. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Um, having used it myself, the, the new architecture, you can select the size of the compute node. So whether it's four CPU, two CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 30 gigs of RAM, you can set that on an individual node basis. I like it a lot. It's pretty dope. Yeah. The, the way you set it now, too, is actually, I think that's a pretty big UX improvement because... When people previously you had to like set the CPU and the memory values differently, right? And uh, just how we have it architected, it's like sometimes those can disagree, and like AWS doesn't like you using certain combinations. Mm. Um, and the the error they give back to you is like pretty pretty opaque. It doesn't really tell you anything. It's just like yeah, I don't like that. So you uh, see the matrix when you see a stack trace. All I see is red text and, and anger. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's 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 what I get out of a stack trace. In a ah! way, <laughs> poetically, yeah, the the computer's kind of angry. It's like, hey man, yeah. why'd you make me throw this air? Oh, something happened. I don't know what to do. You fix it. Like that's what the <laughs> computer's saying. So that's great. Uh, anything else you want to say before you kind of give us a demo? Any other big uh, topic things that I may not have prompted? Yeah, so uh, like another big update with this is like the the Python and yeah the Python and Signals example that we that we pushed out. Um, those are pushed out on like the 0.2 releases, but I actually like tweaked them a little bit uh, so that they now fit with this new one model per node uh, idea, and they're also a little bit more memory memory efficient. So like before, you had to like in immediately increase the size of your node just to right. run like run the example but uh, i added a few lines that that now like do some garbage collecting so hmm. it's a little bit more memory efficient now thanks for doing the work for us <laughs> no worries so let me yeah, yeah take it away my friend i may have to optimize my screen space but i'll fix it when you go cool um so i will go ahead and share So this is my, uh, one this is my trading code. One second. I got to move it into the, here we go. Okay, you're good to go, my friend. Nice, yeah, so this is my, uh, this is my trading code. Uh, nothing too fancy. So if you guys are trying to like copy what I do, I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I have been spending most of my time reconstructing the CLI instead of doing right. data science. So. What I'm running right now basically is like, uh, it's like this new uninstall command that we added to the CLI. Uh, so if you're kind of like tired of compute and you're like, you know what? I just want to run my models manually. I don't know why you would ever want that. But say you get into a bad state and like your infrastructure is all messed up and you did some weird stuff where like you deployed the wrong nodes to the wrong things. You can easily just completely destroy everything with this uninstall command and then you can quickly reinstall it. So, so for people that uh, that 
are already using Numerai CLI, you can just add this dash dash upgrade flag and it'll like take you from the current version of the Numerai CLI, whatever you're on to the most up-to-date one. Um, and then if you're, if you're running an older configuration, you can actually do Numerai upgrade and that'll, uh, that'll actually make sure that you're in an 0.1 and 0.2 version and it'll upgrade that format to 0.3. So since I didn't, I'm not converting from an 0.1 or 0.2, uh, I don't really need to do that right now. It, it just tells me, Hey, uh, I, I see that your, your old configuration isn't even present. You probably don't need to do that. Okay. Also, I, I just wanted to, since I did the alpha, I can kind of comment here a little bit, the upgrade step creates a new folder in your home directory if it doesn't already exist. And then for each node, you can determine a separate path where you store the various predict.py or joblib files, what have you. And so in advance, you can set all that up so that when you go and run, run your Numerai compute and set it all up, it'll go a little faster, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to run Numerai setup, and this is where it's going to ask for my API keys. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment so that I don't divulge those, those secrets, if that's OK. No, it's not OK. You have to give us the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, arbitrage. Nice try. Hey, if I don't try, then I fail. All right, so once I uh, add my Numerai key, uh, once I add my Numerai keys, before this actually, this forced you to give like all four API keys before right. it actually tested them, um, which was terrible because like I'm I'm bad at copying and pasting just like everyone else. Um, <laughs> and then you would have to like go find your API keys again before, yep. before you can actually get it set up correctly. Um, now it just like checks, as soon as you give it a pair of API keys, it'll just check that those are valid. Uh, so you don't have to go find them again. All right, so I just added my API keys, sharing my screen again. Cool, and we can see like right here, uh, it's copying over like a bunch of the CLI files. Mm -hmm. And uh, it finally gives us this message where it's like, yep, it looks like your API keys are set up and working. Right. Uh, it looks like your Terraform files are copied correctly. We have successfully initialized. And like, this was something that wasn't like super clear before. Like, I think the Numerize setup command was like, yep, you're done. And it's like, wait, what did you do? Like what right. happened? So now that we did uh, Numerize setup, um, I'm actually going to change directories into my Numerarch model. And uh, let's do Numerai node config. Okay, so it's actually asking me for a model name now. So this is like part of the new flow where you, it's, it's expecting you to be attaching this prediction node to an actual model. Before it would just like set everything up on Numerai setup. Right. Uh, and then you would have to copy some webhook URL and put it yep. in your account. You had to flip back tabs and keep yeah. everything. It was like, no it more. Was, it could get complicated. Mm -hmm. No more. No um, more. This, yeah, this auto registers the webhook for that model. Sick. So you you don't yeah you don't have to leave your code page. You can just set everything up and then continue doing your data science. You can continue analyzing the stock market. So I'm using my model Numerarch, and actually that that double checks that the the model is in your model list it's it's part of your account and uh, you can actually set up a signals model with like a dash s flag that i'll show you in a moment basically what this is doing now is it's actually like configuring cloud resources okay so it's like contacting aws and doing all that fun stuff for us yeah exactly Sweet. um it uses this uh this language called terraform um pretty cool and it's like gives you a lot of power over the cloud. Um, and I, I restructured it in a way where it's like super modular and it, we should be able to like add new cloud providers to, uh, to the CLI in the future. Awesome. So yeah, it gives us this confirmation mes message. Uh, the cloud resources were created. It registered my webhook for my model and uh, looks like my prediction node was configured successfully. 
Okay. So let's try deploying my model. Oh, quick question. So it gives you that webhook. You're saying we now don't have to copy that webhook and paste it into our uh, model settings? Correct. So actually, if that's I that's sick. Yeah, if I wanted to go to uh, Is it going to let me browse it all? <laughs> I guess not. All right. So if I went to my like models page, mm -hmm. I would actually see that that web hook in in the model. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's a that's a big upgrade there because copying it back and forth, you know, every step that you have to switch tabs or whatever introduces possible errors. So that's good. Yeah, that's just one of the like many like tiny little UX tweaks mm -hmm. that, that we made. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run deploy now, and uh, again, it's it's gonna make sure that I'm using the correct model. So if you want to do this shorthand for this, when you do numeri node, you just specify the model name with new dash m for model and then numerarch for the model name. And then I'm gonna deploy it. It's gonna build the image with all my code in the current directory. Um, it's going to deploy that to the cloud. So we'll see here in a moment that it'll pop up with a message like it's pushing the layers to the cloud. Um, right, like that, that whole big list of stuff that gets uploaded when you do it. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And I think like the, the oh, looks like I actually have some data sets here. I don't want to be pushing those. Yeah, it's actually recommended you don't push any data except for the code and your trained model. Um, that's that's something that uh, that I think is actually already included in the dot Docker ignore. Okay. So, yeah, this uh, this makes sure that like the Docker container doesn't copy over your data. But I just like to be absolutely sure, and I like delete my data sets. Why don't we want to submit data? You'll see in a moment. Um, okay. It takes it takes forever to like push certain <laughs> layers. <laughs> like so, the trained model, for example, is like the biggest file in this uh, directory, okay. and it's probably going to take like a good fifteen minutes to push. So we can probably do some questions uh, while it's deploying um, as soon as this message pops up. Yeah, I mean, I kind of I kind of remember this step. So locally it's just creating the image and then once that's created it gets that list of files that need to be uploaded to aws and then it does it in turn and it just runs the status and you just patiently wait for everything to upload and it really just depends on how fast your local upload is right because it's not dependent on so much on aws yeah it's right? very much uh, uh very much dependent on your local network i'm using right. a, a hotel wi-fi right now so we'll see We'll see how quickly it goes. No, I'd say it looks pretty good so far. Yeah, except this uh, one, this nearly one gig <laughs> layer is gonna <laughs> gonna take a sec. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I since I did the alpha, I don't really have a whole, a whole lot of questions, but I'd love to see some in Zoom chat or maybe on Twitch. I don't want to get to the Slido just yet. We'll save that, but certainly we can take some audience questions if there are any. Well, I got one. When do you think you'll have an implementation for different cloud providers? <sighs> yeah, uh, soon as as the, that's the answer trademark. always is. Yeah, that's I'm channeling Anson right now. Yes. He actually gave me a lot of advice. He was got he talked to me for like an hour yeah. and like Basically, the the whole crux of the talk was just say soon when you want. Yes, share. no, that's like that. That's the number one word usage. If you put GPT three on Anson's rocket chat, every <laughs> sentence is going to either start with or end with soon. And um, that's okay. We love Anson, so we can pick on him a little bit. To uh, to give you more specifics, like this uh, this this next quarter will probably be more focused around trying to push the the data API and the features forward. Right, right. Um, doing some like reliability work. And then uh, I'm imagining like Q3, Q4, 
I'll start like expanding CLI, like do do another push on CLI and uh, expand the feature set quite a bit and uh, add a new cloud provider. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking GCP. Um, I know that there's like a lot of demand for that uh, from a lot of people who, who use like Colab or. Yep. Uh, hey, uh, just more options are better, you know, I don't. I don't have a dog in the fight as to cloud provider. I just use whatever works best. Uh, GRAI is pretty excited for GCP. So you got one taker there um, for sure. The other thing I did want to mention while, since we're uh, waiting on the, the upload, it's important that you figure out the architecture of all your nodes prior to setting it up. Because if you have two models where one depends on the predictions of the other, for instance, if you're A-B testing, perhaps you're doing no feature neutralization and some feature neutralization, it would not be conducive to run those two models in separate nodes because you want to get the prediction file once and modify it in the same node. So there is a little bit of work to do before you dive in if you have multiple models. However, if each model is truly independent, doesn't rely on any other step from a different model, yeah, you can set it up. 15 independent nodes and you're good to go. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, pipelines do still need to operate as a pipeline on one right. node. Um, we don't yet have a way to like share data between nodes, but that is coming. It's in the roadmap, right? Uh, like we have a bunch of like, while I was doing this big restructure, I was coming up with like really interesting new ways to, to give data scientists core features that they need. Um, so yeah, like a new cloud provider is one of them. Uh, just right. GPUs, like access to GPUs, I feel like it's like a basic human right. Jonathan talks about <laughs> these basic human rights that, that we deserve um, as data scientists and coders. And I, I think GPUs is one of those. And I would, I would love to see it in the CLI. Yeah, great. It also looks like your push finished. Yeah. That's unexpected. So let's, Went let's faster than we quick, thought. Uh, let's do a quick test. So what this is going to do is it, uh, it's going to make sure that Numeri can actually reach your webhook and call it and like trigger your model from your webhook. Uh, and then it's going to wait for this, this uh, task to, to be scheduled in the cloud. Right. Because the first and, time it takes a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the first time it's like, it doesn't really have a read on like what the task requires. So it usually takes a sec for it to actually like spin up and get queued on on some kind of instance in the cloud. Right. Uh, and once it does, it, it creates a log file. So that's actually what we're looking for is like, has it created its log file yet? Are there any events? Um, and then it just starts waiting for events uh, to to come through. This used to be three different commands. Right, because you had to you had to trigger the web, web hook and then you had to ask for log files. Yeah, and, uh, and then there was like a third command that would actually like check the status of, of like your triggered web hook to see if it actually like scheduled the task, right? Right, right, yeah, because if it was pending or initialized yeah. or whatever what have you yeah mm -hmm. so this actually this actually does all three of those uh in one command so you actually you don't have to do anything else you just run test it'll check your webhook which now instead of calling your webhook directly it makes sure that numeri can reach your webhook because that's kind of like the important component it's like it's it's nice if you can reach your webhook but if numeri can't then like right. we're not going to be able to trigger your model it's not going to automatically submit um, so yeah, it does all three of these automatically, and then it streams the logs directly to your local, uh, local command prompt. So we can see that, uh, the model is currently unzipping, uh, Numeri data set 257. It's, uh, loading the existing trained model that I had that I uploaded with it. It's, uh, now reading the, the prediction data. So it looks like it's, it's about to predict. Yeah, I mean, it's it's moving along nicely. This is usually where I break it. I try to do too much at once, but. 
Yeah, there actually is a question if uh, we can take it. And it stays off yeah. on snow. Is there some validation checks available? For example, making sure that the validation diagnostics do not change with the new submission. It's like That's some quality question. controls. That's a good question. Um, I didn't implement that in the current test, but I don't see why we couldn't. Um, it does check that you like submitted correctly. Uh, but I think part of that check could be that like, it'll, it'll like dump some st like validation statistics back onto your command prompt. Uh, like I, I, yeah, I, I don't see why you would have to like even leave the CLI to do that. Okay. Okay. You could just implement that test yourself, I feel, yeah. in your own predict code and just assert that it's equal to something that you've saved. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really so, good Yeah, point. not everyone would want that test, but you could do it. Yeah, I guess it would also depend on the precision, right? But if it's if you serialize the model object, that should be 100% the same every single time. And yeah, if that's the if that's what you want, you could certainly do that. Although I just oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we failed live. I love it. This is a good learning moment because this is the most common complaint in the compute rocket chat channel. Yeah, with it's the, the exact area I wanted to show. Okay, um, so this was purposeful. Dang. Yeah. So that was in yeah. April <laughs> Fools. Ha, April Fools. It happened. Yeah, so this we planned is, it. This is the most common error I see on yes. the computer channel. Um, people will run out of memory. And uh, in previous versions, you would have to sign in to AWS, like the console. You'd have to find the task that just ran. You'd have to like go into the details and figure out what reason it stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Get like why? Why do you need to do that? Get rid of it. We can just call it from the CLI. Like we can just pull that information down with the CLI. We actually already had it available. Right. So why not just display it? Sweet. Love so it. this thing, yeah, we we uh, ran out of memory. It's very easy to fix that actually. So let's let's go back to our config. Um, let's say I'll specify my, my model here, and uh, I actually want to upgrade the size to something like large memory, right? So mem large, and that's just gonna immediately upgrade the size of my node. Uh, it actually doesn't take too long. Um, it's a very small change. Right, because all those other files are already on it. And because of the hashes, it determines, oh, this file exists. I don't need to upload it again. Exactly. Um, we don't even need to deploy. So like the deployment step is like more for your code. And the configuration step is more for the infrastructure. Oh, because it reaches out to AWS and says, here's how we want this thing to be set up. Correct. That yeah. makes sense. OK, gotcha. So okay. now if I run my test again, uh, it should pretty much get all the way through the test. Um, without any memory errors. I bet it's going to be fine. Yeah. I mean, that's like, everyone's like, oh, thanks, I fixed it. If you do something like partial reading of data um, or like per epic training, uh, which I don't have in, in the current example code, mm -hmm. uh, if you do something like that, it's very likely you can get away with like very low resources. Um, cause you're not, you're not loading all that, that data into memory and training on it all at once. Right. Uh, so I have two compute architectures set up one for my personal accounts and the other for the Twitch examples. And my bill every month is like $3. Do you anticipate that changing at all? Uh, not unless you, you like are running 30 mem large instances uh like it'll definitely scale the more tasks you run like the more models you run with it but not by much you know so you're running... like three bucks to seven bucks maybe yeah yeah i don't see it more than like more than doubling because hold my beer to... and watch this <laughs> uh if we introduce like gpu instances right. that's a whole nother story oh, yeah um, no we won't even get into that because that's totally dependent on what all is being done with those exactly yeah 
But yeah, like AWS, uh, I think one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we chose AWS is that it is like one of the cheapest cloud providers for how many features they offer. Right. Um, it's just a super inexpensive way to, as, as long as you know how to configure it, they, they don't really hold your hand. All, no, all. no. I, I, when I looked into this some time ago, it was daunting. Uh, I don't do the engineering. I do the data. And so it was very scary and intimidating because <laughs> I'm like, oh, my word. I have no idea what these words mean. Like, can we just stick with the statistics, please? Uh, <laughs> so this is wonderful because it's such a huge learning curve to deal with all this stuff. And I'm very grateful for this as a resource. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, this is like one of my roles at Numerai. It's like uh, giving, giving like automation tools and making data scientists lives easier. Wonderful. I love, I love doing that because like data scientists. We love you. Yeah. I think I love data scientists and I just like want you guys to love me. We do. This is a good step toward our uh, future relationship, Noah. This is a quality signal that you're serious. <laughs> And more updates are coming. I mean, the the roadmap is is chocked full of like even just minor UX updates that are just like really nice to have little tweaks. Right. So what are some other gotchas with this? Uh, I would probably say that since this is a command line only thing, if you're not used to using a command line, that takes a little getting used to. Um, what, what other things do you think are, are kind of gotchas people should be aware of? Yeah, definitely the the command line interface nature of it. Um, right. If people aren't used to like to hacking on MS DOS or something, uh, yeah, they they won't really understand why this is useful. Um, definitely the structure of your prediction node. So this is explained in in the wiki and uh, oh, um, we got another container memory oh. usage issue. Oh, interesting. But, but you have a submission uploaded correctly. Yeah, uh, it looks like that might be an actual little bug. Ooh, we found a bug. Yeah, um, this might just be getting the information from the last task that ran. Maybe. I think it's just like confusing the current task with the previous task. See, we do it live, fam. And when we do it live, we fix all the things as we go. This is yeah. wonderful though. This is a good thing because when we find it now, it's so you don't have to out there. So we're saving the audience um, for trouble. Yeah, but the exactly. test is complete. I'm going to I'm going to say that that's just some kind of log file leak. Or AWS is pulling an April Fools on us. <laughs> Could be that. I I like that explanation. Okay, we'll go with that. Plus. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the green text at the bottom says we submitted correctly. We, our model now submits automatically. Um, and this is actually checking for like a, a pretty specific thing that uh, it's like this ID that we send to your compute node. And the CLI sets it up in a way that it feeds that into your model. And uh, Numer API, which is like the Python Numer API, will then submit that ID back to Numerai. So it actually makes sure that your model is submitting for the correct round at the correct time for the correct trigger. Nice. So it's a nice little like validation. Yeah, for sure. And then a couple like, uh, so one other, I think this this last one is, is pretty useful too. Numerai doctor, um, it just double checks that your environment is like set up correctly. So if you ever have like an issue in your environment, uh, this checks that, you know, you have Docker and Python available, the CLI is at the correct version and your API keys are, are set up and, and working correctly. And then it links you to like a full troubleshooting wiki that um, one of our Japanese users has actually really helped us nail down the Windows 8 during the alpha testing. I remember. Yeah. They did a lot out. of work helping. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tit BTC Cash. They, they really like. They really took took a took a lot of hours to work Indeed. out. The issues. I know. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd see these very long threads between you and the user, and I'm like, wow, they're doing the work. Good. This is awesome. So definitely, um, 
this is going to be a very robust documented upgrade that's for sure yeah so that kind of uh that kind of finishes off the, the demo i had planned great let's see if i can stop sharing here well it's okay i've already pulled it out of the way so people can see us now nice hi hello hello so thanks, Noah. That's really awesome to see. Uh, I'm going to spend some time soon doing a full walkthrough for folks with the timestamps and all the things to make sure that people can do it. There'll be two paths. One that you've you've never installed it before. The second you're upgrading, right? Yep. And I'm sure we'll talk about setting it up with pipelines and things because that's, you know, the the design I think is important unless all of your models are independent. But it, it's it's so nice. You tell, you tell CLI which model you want this node to be built for and if you already have a folder set up for it bango bango you're done it's awesome so i like it a lot yeah it also allows you to like automatically copy examples during configuration so there's like a little flag where you can say right. i don't i don't have any code yet give me the example for python 3 tournament and it'll just like copy those files immediately and configure those files as your model's node sweet so I'm going to do, we're going to do a rapid fire questions about you. I may skip right. a few. I preview my questions with all my guests to be fair. So I don't catch them off guard. But you never responded. So I bet you didn't do a lot of prep on your interview questions. No, I read through them. The, <laughs> okay. the non-response was a, was a quiet affirmation. You're working hard. That, I knew that that was what it really was. Uh, Noah, where do you live? Where are you in the world? Well, right now I'm actually in San Fran. Um, cool. visiting the Samurai team. We're doing a, a little, a little like hackathon week. We're having some fun over here. Um, team yeah. building. Yeah. Team building. Uh, I love these people. They're they're Yeah. They are really my team. I love them. It's a great group. Um, you I can say I'm a bit of a fan too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's kind of an understatement. Barb. <laughs> so you you're like in San Francisco, Washington. but you didn't say where you live. Yeah, I live in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Southern boy. Uh, I actually grew up in Florida, so. Oh, my man. Yeah, so I'm I'm a Floridian by nature, and then and you the don't man. meet many of those. Yeah. Great. Where uh, it's Jacksonville, Florida, was it? Uh, not Jacksonville. Um, no? I was, I like grew up in Tampa, St. Pete, so like oh, okay. around the Bay Area down yep. there. Yep, Gulf Coast. Got it. Very nice, and. So the question of what do you do for a living? I guess formally, what is your title at Numerai? I am the Minister of Submissions. Nice. So, yeah. Trademark Very, that. Uh, I'm timestamping it. I have a timestamp button. I've just timestamped that because that was hilarious. Official. Yeah. I uh, I have it on my LinkedIn. I put it on my uh, Clubhouse bio. So I'm all about it. That's I'm the dope. Minister of Submissions. Minister uh, of so submissions. That role is kind of. Um, making sure the scoring pipeline is, and I know you're probably going to grill me about this, but making sure the, the scoring pipeline works correctly and uh, <laughs> you get daily scores reliably, which- What do I'm we want? Scores. When do we <laughs> want them? Consistently on time as yeah. soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. And like, there's like, we can control probably like 50% of the unreliability that we've been experiencing. And then the kind of like a lot of that is, is actually just like what we rely on upstream. It's like a lot of our data providers. No doubt. So they don't like to work on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> or late at night. So um, uh, what compelled you to pursue this job? I actually, uh, so Mike P reached out to me because um, I had heard he had, he went to Numerai. Um, I didn't know too much about it. Um, but the, the company we had worked for previously um, had essentially like kind of dissolved by that point. And we, I was like on the market kind of looking for a job. I was, I was working part-time for a contractor. Mike P reached out and he was like, hey, I'm working for Numerai. Would you be interested in, a, in like interviewing? And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know much about Numerai. Let me research it. So I spent like probably three or four days where I like stayed up late every night. I was like doing really hard homework on Numerai. And by the end of those three days, I 
I realized kind of this vision that Numerai had for this decentralized hedge fund. And it was so different than any other like, yes, uh, like financial uh, system I had ever heard of or experienced. So I was on board immediately. I was kind of like, wow, this, this seems like the future to me. This seems like people are, are like, this team is way ahead of their time. Anybody who's talked to Richard for any amount of time will say that that's exactly what's going on. Definitely a future seer and he's making it happen. So it's a fun project to be around. So what do you do for fun? You're not, surely you're not just a workaholic like the rest of us. <laughs> I'd like to say that I'm, that I'm not a workaholic, but uh, yeah, we all, we all say that and it's, it's a lie. Part of my free time is going <laughs> to school. Um, so okay. I'm getting, I'm getting my master's degree in computer science specializing nice. in machine learning okay so, well bring yeah. it my friend join the tournament and show us what you got yeah it's a yeah. big fancy I, degree over here <laughs> i have a few i have a few like really interesting ideas like i, I kind of wanted to try this like interesting reinforcement learning strategy for the hackathon um but i think i'm just gonna like try it as a signals model instead okay uh, so on a what you you do this school stuff and uh, what what else makes you a human? Um, I spin poi. So I'm sorry, you what? Spin poi. Uh, it's something that not a lot of people have heard of. Yeah, uh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it originated in like the Maori tribes. In, okay. Like, the South Pacific Asian islands, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they they they're essentially just like these balls on strings that you hold in your hands and you can swing them around a little bit like nunchucks nice. but it's like a dance it's like it's like more of like a ceremonial craft that's dope yeah all right so doing the art i love it performance art on a scale of one to ten how weird are you um probably like a solid nine. Ooh, cool hey somebody who's honest i like it yeah I, Everybody lies I and say they're like a six or seven. I'm like, no, that's. I don't try not I'm... to say it while I'm with them, though. You know. Yeah. Well, like I, I see a lot of people, and uh, and like sometimes when I talk to talk to people I don't know, like on average, like I'll have like some weird opinion or idea that they either disagree with or hadn't thought of, and I was like, hmm, maybe I am weird. And then I'll meet. And then I'll meet people that are like way more eccentric than I am. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not that weird. So like, I think if we're going on like a kind of yep. a death well exponential scale, I would say a nine is, is, is probably safe. I love it. Uh, uh, weird is a spectrum and <laughs> the scale is unknown because we don't have all the data. So I have to be a little choosy with questions that we're running a bit out of time, but I want to know, this is just a fun one. If you have a billboard with anything on it, what would you put on it and why? This is my, I love this question. I've had some really funny responses. So the pressure is on. Uh, there was this one person I met uh, that always handed out business cards that said, what's up? Be my mother effing friend. And it was like, just a picture of him. Like, what's up? <laughs> I love it. Thank you for not dropping the full vulgar version because i think twitch yeah, would probably course. ban us <laughs> no i, I uh, love it so that's that's your that, that's your billboard yeah that would be that would be awesome. my billboard, censored and all <laughs> with the, with the asterisks instead of yeah. full letters i love it that's great that's great somebody should meme that i really do think that that's the way to go i i'd be remiss if i didn't ask this one um who is your favorite team member that's a Ooh. hard one especially when some of them sign your check. <laughs> so I always give the team members an out. If you pick Richard, nobody is going to hate you for it. That's a safe bet. But we really want to know the truth. Well, I feel Unless like really Richard, is your favorite. Like Richard is too easy. He's almost like the default answer. Like it's a safe one. He signs the checks. So well, it's like <laughs> I feel like this question is actually like it should be who's your favorite team member other than Richard? Right. Well, that's why I give the caveat, you know, he signs the checks. So um, I give you the bailout there. It's like, it's, it's hard to pick specifically. I oh, want to say, 
I want to say Michael Oliver, but everyone picks Michael Oliver because he gets Don't, picked on so much. But that's how voting works. That, that's how it works. You get an independent chance. If that, if that's your pick, man, that's your pick. I think I'm I think I'm gonna pick I think I'm gonna pick NJ. She's NJ. like she's she is like high key behind the scenes, like absolute yep. killer, like administrative. Yeah. NJ NJ kills the game. And yep. uh, she, I think she makes all of our jobs possible here at Numerai. Yep. Uh, that can't be denied. Uh, NJ is the bomb.com. And thanks for joining us, NJ. She sends a heart. She went like this in her Zoom grid thing. I know I don't have that queued up, but that's what was happening in the background. Okay, so I did that. And what is after compute 0 0.3? I didn't ask what comes in compute after 0 0.3. I said, what is after that? Uh, like, I can't answer with compute. Like, like the feature roadmap, the blue sky. What are you going to build after compute? Okay, I see. Uh, the data API. Okay. That's what's next. Nice. I'm, uh, I have a few like proof of concepts whipped up, um, but nothing like usable. And uh, I, I want to steps. get, yeah, I want to get it to a point where like any user can request any feature and uh, all three 10 current features are like already going to be available. We like have it set up in a way where that's going to be the default data set that you query. Yes, thank so you. If you. If you just say, give me the data, you'll get the 310. Give me all the and data. Then, uh, yeah, and then there's going to be like like options, like you want to pick specific features, like maybe you want 50 of the 310 and you want 50 of the new you know, 3100 features, then you can do that too. Cool. So data API is next. Nice. Well, I have some Slido questions I'd like to ask if you're game. Uh, and Let's the first it. one is, hey, Arc Bro, when's stake management? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a fireside chat question as well. well it, got uh, it got asked today. So Anson told me to say soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love but it. Very love soon. It. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, we we're doing like, like, as everyone knows, we're doing some, some pretty big changes to how we do staking and payouts. Um, we're trying to make it so that like, we can, like, we're trying to build longevity into the staking platform and make sure that we can actually do payouts for an infinite amount of time. So for however long Numerai can keep going. And, uh, and I also want to like start including some like staking, uh, staking functionality in the CLI. So you can actually, you don't have to like really go to the website, go to a separate thing. You can just do everything right from your model console. I think I saw that in the medium post, there's like a flow chart and I saw that there was stake in something about a stake change in the workflow. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe that indicates they're going to put some functionality there so we can do that at a model level. Definitely want to, yeah. Uh, I want I want you to be able to like control most things you can control on the website from the CLI. Um, so it's kind of just like a one stop tool if you're if you're into awesome. content. Cool. So hey, that that means zero point three is a step in that direction. We have the next question. Uh, it doesn't say who it's to, but I'm gonna assume it's you. How do you get everything done? You are a machine. Thanks for all your help. Oh yeah, I think this was uh, Liz. Um, I don't know really how I get everything done. Caffeine, caffeine helps. Caffeine helps, a yes. Lot. Yeah. I concur. And meditation. I uh, I try to like wake up every morning, do a little bit of yoga, do some meditation. Lovely. That, uh, that helps me focus on, on everything in front of me. Namaste. Uh, I went to yoga on Tuesday night and I hated it. Because hated I'm, it. Because I power lift, so I have zero flexibility. Oh, okay. I, I may be okay. extremely strong, but I can't bend over to tie my shoes. Oh, I totally get it. I used to be uh I used to be quite the lifter and and okay. uh definitely struggled. So you know what I'm talking about then yeah. specifically. It's absolutely brutal. Like these people have their legs up in the air over their head, and I'm like, I can't even get my butt off the ground. Oh yeah, my girlfriend kicks my butt every every time we do yoga together, she kicks my butt and like I'm I don't get it. I'm like I uh 
hey, yeah. you know what though? It, it is very good. Uh, I'm I'm down for the mindfulness meditation part. Tying it into yoga, is, I can't focus because I'm like dying. I'd rather not <laughs> die. I'd rather meditate. Uh, yeah. all right, there's a fun question. Um, we may need help answering this one. How is the Numerai office set up? Are you guys mostly remote or in person? We uh, we actually don't have an office right now. We're we're going to a new one. Like COVID kind of like scrambled a lot of our oh, yeah. a lot of how we do things. Um, I work from Atlanta, uh, and so does so does Chris and Michael Oliver. They work remote. Um, so we at least have like a few remote people, um, and the rest of the people in San Fran, I think, have been doing like a combination of like work from home and like maybe like visit uh, like a coworker's place to to work with them. Um, but yeah, we we are getting a new office. Uh, it'll be like very homey. It'll be very nice. The vibes will we'll uh, be checking out it's gonna be sick nj do you have anything to add to that i know you've been um yeah we are at the sort of least review point of um a spot in the presidio and it's a neighborhood that richard and i have been looking at since like 2018 but um we've never really had capacity to to make the, the leap um but we recently had pedro join the team um and he's just been fantastic help with um administrative and like sort of ea type stuff so with the extra hands we we do feel confident about making the move now so um like noah said it's very homey it's awesome. a former office's home literally um so yeah we're looking forward to hosting a lot of the community who comes to visit already spoke to siraj who is moving over to the side of the world sometime later this year so looking forward to meeting a lot of um the users who pass through San Francisco as well will be able to host them at the new office. Awesome. So does that make Pedro the minister of swag? Um, <laughs> he is currently the, the minister of swag distribution. Um, and he's also the minister of um, getting, getting executive shit done, basically. Love it. Awesome. Well, thanks for assisting on that question. Uh, let's see what else. We have a couple more. But this is a cool one. I don't think anybody's ever asked this. How does it feel working for Numerai? Like, uh, what's it like having computers tell you what to do all the time? Kind of amazing. <laughs> I love computers, and I love yeah. uh, I love the efficiency of like knowing exactly what to do and the optimality of of that decision. Um, yeah, Numerai is is awesome. The people here are awesome. Um, very forward thinking. Very like futurology adjacent. Um, yeah, I, I can like, I see the vision of Numerai in everyone's eyes here, which is like, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever been a part of a company like this before. There's a lot of buy-in is what you're saying. That That's a good sign. You want to see that? Definitely want to see that. So it's like totally dope. Totally dope. Yeah. To Nailed suffice. It. Nailed it. Uh, from Anonymous, will the new Numerai 3100 features be compatible with old models? Would it, and then a comment, would be nice if the 310 we have now were in there and separable from the rest, in which you kind of previewed that a little bit. That is part of the plan. So I guess I can answer that question. Yes. Yes, 100%. Yes. 310 will be in there. You'll be able to query them very easily uh, and will work just how they have always been working. Um, right. Nothing will change about those. And you'll just get new freedom you'll just get extra features that you can play around with and start experimenting with the most important question and it's been actually repeated in the various venues so it just happens to be in slido the most important question of the day in fact of any day when scores good question uh i actually like while we were doing the the compute launch uh we got an error posted to the to the internal chat so oh, it's, no. it's, it's being taken care of. We have one of our masterminds. We have Patrick working on it. Yeah. Um, it I think it seems to be some kind of blockchain issue, um, probably related to gas or oh, of course, just some small glitch. It's Thursday. Uh, it must be gas fee day. <laughs> yeah, that seems to always be always be the issue day for gases for gas prices. Um, so we're we're taking care of it. Hopefully, not too late. Is what I'm gonna say. Hey, you know it's it's Thursday, and with 
Ethereum the way it is, we kind of have to take it as we can. But there's actually been, we've now begun publicly speculating on how we can improve MMC calculations to speed up the daily scores. And so we have a whole team of community engineers speculating on how we might build that out. Um, when you're ready, we can do a RFP. Is it RFP? Request for proposal. Yeah, RFP. And, and you know, we can just we can talk about engineering specs and, and get it lined up, and we'll uh, we'll call it Degen Inc. is willing to uh, <laughs> contribute to your MMC calculations every day. It's like it's funny. It's funny you say that because it's like. The MMC thing would, it might speed it up like a little bit. Like we do take quite a bit of time to to calculate MMC, oh, but no doubt. But like it's it's really these log jams that tend to happen earlier in the pipeline. Uh, like if our data provider doesn't doesn't get us data quickly enough, or if you know if our pending stake transactions don't go through correctly. Yep. Um, but like I I think all those things are like the data provider thing can't really be fixed per se. I disagree. We have users all over the world. All you have to do is give us an address. <laughs> and I bet I can get a user to go out there and stand outside with a sign saying when scores. I have a feeling that if with enough of the dispersion, the diaspora, well, I don't even know how to say it, diaspora of numeri, right? We're everywhere. And we can, we can put some public pressure on some folks. So, you know, you don't have to say it publicly because I don't want to dox anybody. But if you want to like put it in paste bin and at just an address, just an address, link to it somehow, like an Easter egg, and we find it, you know, we can put a bounty on that. I bet we could we could make it happen. Who knows? I if, will uh, make somebody work on the weekend. I I will. <laughs> three edgy NJ says three edgy five me. Yeah, uh, that's actually what I was about to say. If someone posts an erasure bay bounty, uh, I don't know. Like I can't personally, I can't control if someone answers that bounty myself. Just saying. So data providers be on alert. We demand <laughs> timely updates. The market opens and closes at the same time every trading day. And it is inexcusable that you don't give us, not us, but you don't give Numeri the data so they can give us our scores. So how dare you? <laughs> mess with our daily scores that's what i have to say about that well so, once once we fix the uh the ethereum issues that will maybe oh, buddy. like i don't know i i feel like you think you can fix the can ethereum fix issues god bless you child if if we can fix ethereum the entire blockchain <laughs> the entire evm uh and we just like overhaul the yeah. whole thing eth 2.0 and layer two man let's yeah. uh let's go uh yeah uh, at this point, it kind of is what it is. I don't see anything on the immediate in the immediate future that's going to resolve some of these issues because it's a problem not just for Numeri, for literally every Ethereum-based project out there. So, yeah, it's a rough problem that that we've been discussing this week, and it's just like I bet there's uh, there's just no easy answer, you know. Well, well Richard no said the the amount that you guys spend in gas every week that's two full time people. Yeah, I'd rather have two full-time engineers working on stake management than having to pay gas. Yeah, Just saying. I I get referrals, that. Referrals I, welcome. Refer. Yeah. So we actually talked about that in uh, Daily Scores and Chill several days ago. There's seven positions open on AngelList. I did share that link, and uh, I continue to do so. It's a good sign to see. Also, you kind of reveal what you're working on. <laughs> Because you're like, we want somebody to take ownership of the stake management pipeline. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So they're really serious. They're going to hire somebody for that. So that, that's like, that's awesome. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, feature leakage. But, you know, we, we tend to read the tea leaves anyway. So. We just need, we need Vitalik Buterin to create a, a Numeri blockchain that we can run Numeraire on. And then every compute node that a user spins up can be its own node on the blockchain being like a validator for the network. Anson's given that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's the, I feel like that's kind of like, that's the ideal scenario in, in some respect. If Ethereum mm -hmm. can't give us what we need, if, we, if it can't give us the transaction throughput. Uh, let me just see if we have some Twitch questions that I missed because we're up against the hour. 
it's not like a, a firm thing. You know, I go over if it's important, um, but I do try to respect people's time. So we're at that hour, but let's make sure we got everything. Uh, one second. Okay, so I asked that one. Uh, Bench asks when scores. And you never said that scores would be on time, by the way. That was a comment that was made. You just said that you're, you know, you'll do the best you can. Soon was, I think, the answer. Soon. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, 10th Mountain Guy. Hey, so Richard on Clubhouse said yesterday they were working on a Numeri cloak. Yeah. And it would probably that's, go really good on the Minister of Submissions. <laughs> I would love a cloak. If if Richard is is uh, nice enough to give me one, I would I would humbly accept it and only wear it when I'm told to. Um, it's too hot. I'm never wearing a cloak. <laughs> Sorry, not happening. Uh, be for the conference, though, you have to wear one at the conference. Well, it's cold enough. If it's in San Francisco, I have to wear a winter coat. Yeah, I'll be San Francisco probably. <laughs> so you can guarantee guaranteed I'm going to wear a coat or something. I just I practically die when I go to San Francisco. It's so cold. Kind of blows my mind, but uh, as Noah knows, I'm used to 92 degrees and 100% humidity. So I would but, never wear that. I, I don't think I would ever wear the cloak anywhere near Florida. No, 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 it doesn't work. I, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to cut this hair soon. Wow, because, because it's so hot, it's like I'm wearing a knitted cap or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you gotta, you gotta like shave the sides how I have it and just have that's, the top. That's possible. Uh, it's like a top knot. I just wanted to see what full man bun looked like. Now I have it. Now I'm like, okay, it's really hot. Yeah, the sides uh, give you a lot of aeration. It's a lot of surface area. Makes sense. Makes sense. Honeycomb says stake management would really make compute adoption much faster. If yeah. it's integrated in compute, I would completely agree because that would be pretty good. Uh, AI Joe wants to know, hey, ArcBro, when scores? soon okay okay just wanted <laughs> I'm sorry i'm very sorry that i don't that i don't have a better answer than that um i can ask go, Vitalik. i can i can go look at our uh, at our pipeline right now if you want me to oh we'll it, just we'll get the questions you can just post in rocket chat you can give us a timer because yesterday liam said it was 73 seconds and so that kind of precision is now what we what we expect <laughs> okay so that you have to at least match the Net, the most recent best deliverable and so now we have second resolution so that that'll do it's passable if you give a second resolution on the prediction on that uh bench says when will this new office be ready also soon i think i think nj actually has more information on that yeah i'm i'm actually wearing my pajamas which is why <laughs> i keep putting the, the screen closed i'm just wearing a, a dallas cowboys uh t-shirt um, so kind of eyeing May 1st, um, okay, that's real May soon. 1st is just like, we get the keys. So when I subbed at our office last year, I left most of our furniture behind because we had actually inherited it from the previous tenants and it really wasn't a vibe. Um, so we need to get a bunch of furniture. We need to upgrade the internet to fiber and things like that. So mm. it's kind of like a soft access in May. And then, um, hopefully by sort of you know, June 1, mid-June, um, we're, we're good to go. And, and by that point, hopefully, um, you know, working in person is widely acceptable again and everyone can do so safely. So I think the timeline uh, works out really, really well. Awesome. So I got through all the questions in Twitch, in Zoom, in the Slido. And usually I like stall a little bit, see if anybody else wants to post a question. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. And any closing remarks, Noah, anything you want to say before we hop? Uh, yeah, Compute, CLI. If you don't have it, definitely get it. It's uh, automate your submissions because like we have some things coming down the pipeline that are going to, uh, you're going to want to have automated submissions available, definitely. Um, especially like when we drop the data API, like you're going to want to be able to reliably query that and look for, look for that data. So get like digging through 3,100 features is not going to be fun if you're doing it manually. If you want to play golf on Saturday, like I do, you have to have a compute it full stop. Golf takes half the day. I do not have time to 
go and play golf and then rush home and upload my models because it's just not going to happen. You need compute. Take your weekends back and uh, you'll you'll thank me later. It definitely changes the game when you don't have to micromanage your submissions every weekend. Whether you yeah. do it Saturday or Sunday, it doesn't matter if the webhook is triggered. It will run. It will upload your predictions. And then you get an email that says it worked fine. It's a beautiful thing. So I'll be playing golf on Saturday. I'll look at my phone and be like, oh, wonderful. I have nothing to do except play golf. Yeah. And so relax, golf is just right? a small example of what you may do in your free time. Maybe you spin poi and you don't want to be distracted. Therefore, use compute. Maybe you're like AI Joe and you want to make some dank memes. Well, guess what? You can't make dank memes while you're managing your submissions. So it makes that extremely easy to do. Maybe you just want to spend the day, your day in your pajamas. You can do that too. And you don't even have to get off the sofa because it'll just run on AWS. It's a wonderful thing. So no, thank you very much for previewing this today. I really like what I see so far and I'm excited for what the future brings. And yeah, even Minu Cat on Twitch says, thanks, Noah, great job. Uh, thank, thank you. And thank you for the, uh, for the chance to get to show off my work. I love, yeah. I love to do that. Yeah, we have really cool thanks. Honeycomb says, thanks. Doc Nisa says, yeah, great job. And I think that's the best way to close it. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. We'll be back tomorrow for Daily Squares and Chill at the usual time, 1430 UTC. If nothing else, may the burn be in your favor. I'll see everybody in Rocket Chat. Thanks again, everybody.